from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster. I'm coming to you from my car. Well, actually, not my car. I'm coming to you from someone's garage in their car. Tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be in my car in the same garage uh, while they're at work. Uh, you may not, this may be your first time listening to sleep with me, but yeah, I'm on a backup recorder recording in a car and it's a long meandering story. Maybe it'll come up in the intro. Uh, but this is sleep with me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. You never knew a car could sound so sleepy. Uh, if you're new to the show, it does take a few tries to get used to sleep with me as a podcast to keep you company to be your friend in the deep dark night while you fall asleep. So uh, just kind of see how it goes. It just, it takes two or three tries just because it's a very different show than what you might expect. What we got coming up is support. That's how the show's free twice a week. Then a long meandering intro meant to ease you into bedtime. Uh, I don't want you to miss out on that. It's a, uh, it's uh, kind of introduces to the show and, and helps you wind down. And after that, will be our uh, Mandalorian coverage. I think we'll be talking about uh, episode five, which is uh, 16, chapter 21. 16 plus five is 21, right? Uh, so five, six. Yeah, I think I've, yeah, uh, that's chapter five. Holy cow. Uh, it's not called chapter five, holy cow, because it would be called holy, you know, uh, but th- if you say this is not the way to make a sleep podcast, I say, well, this is the way to go off topic and, uh, you know, not make any sense. I'm so really so glad you're here. I really hope I can help because I make the show. I know how it feels in the deep, dark night. And I really believe you deserve a good night's sleep and I'm here to help. So I'm so glad you're here. Uh, thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody. I just wanted you to know that Sleep With Me is a part of the Pro Democracy Podcast Coalition. It's a group of podcast hosts and producers who care about the future of American democracy, and it's nonpartisan. I know this year isn't a presidential election year, even a midterm year, but 2023 is anything but an off year when it comes to fighting for a political system that's open and fair to all. If you turn on the news or you see what's happening around the country at the state level, you recognize things are as pressing as ever. And and for the past year, we've partnered with a nonpartisan anti-corruption organization, Represent Us, to give you, our listeners, the tools to pass strong anti-corruption laws from coast to coast. And those laws put power back in the hands of the people where it belongs. And that helps everybody. And that creates a place where things like Sleep With Me can exist. So let's get to it. There's still work to do. Visit represent.us slash pod to learn more about how you can help. That's represent us slash pod r-e-p r-e s-e-n-t dot u-s slash pod thanks everybody all right everybody it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor helix sleep do yourself a favor take the quiz at helix sleep.com slash sleep because you deserve to be matched with a mattress that fits your sleep needs and your sleep preferences so take that quiz helix sleep.com slash sleep and see which bed you get matched with and then think about the bed you're sleeping in right now and how much more comfortable you could be with a helix because oh boy i just spent two nights in my helix dusk lux after almost two weeks away and it was like getting into like you know those cartoons where there's an oasis in the desert it was like being in that oasis helix is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences the helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses including a collection of luxury models a mattress for big and tall sleepers even a mattress made just for kids and you just take that helix sleep whiz and you'll find your perfect mattress in under two minutes minutes which helix works best for you helixsleep.com slash sleep and helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home and that's why they offer a hundred night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to try out your new helix mattress everybody's unique everybody sleeps different that's why helix has you covered if several different mattress models to choose from each designed for you and how you sleep how do you like your mattress to feel do you want memory foam with that optimal 
pressure relief. When you sleep on your side, you want more responsive foam to cradle your body in those stomach and back sleeping positions. Are you like scoots? You want those enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night? That's why when I took the Helix quiz, I said I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach. I like to sleep cool. I got matched with the Helix at Dusk Lux. Not only is it the best mattress I've ever slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are shipped in a box straight to your door for free. American made. They come with that 10 or 15 year warranty, depending on the model. And get this, Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. You just got to go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. This is the best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. So take that quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep and let me know what happens. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time for the new Deep Dark United Supporter Zone. Uh, I've learned from all that feedback, we're all in this together. And I want to support Stevie, who signed up and subscribes to the show on Apple Podcasts. So Stevie isn't even hearing this message. Uh, Stevie opted for the ad-free experience on Apple Podcasts. But when you support the show directly on Patreon or Apple Podcasts, like Stevie did, it supports the show for everybody else. Uh, That's what's amazing. That's why we take the time for the Deep Dark United Supporter Zone because we all are in this together. And I don't know, that's reassuring for me because I'm a person that overthinks everything, including these supporter zones and all that other stuff. I think I have control over everything. I want over control over everything. And it's listeners like Stevie and all the listeners who let me know we're in this together. So thank you so much. Thank you, Stevie. And yeah, if you want to be a part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, support a sponsor, support the show, let me know about it. Fill out the form on our sponsors page, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. So I can thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone, you get the support you need. There's links to resources in the show notes where you could connect with right now, including international resources. It's also uh, about taking action to support uh, other people, uh, to support the communities we're in. Not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but learning more and taking action. There's links to resources we could do that right now in the show notes. And actually, one of the podcasters, one of the things you, we're, we're, I'm just kicking off right now, right here, is uh, the Stop Hate fundraiser uh, is another podcaster that I've never even met before, Alicia Stella, who uh, runs a podcast and YouTube channel called Park Stop and is running the Park Stop uh, Stop Hate fundraiser. It supports the Trevor Project. And if you want to support it, uh, use the links in our show notes. You'll be hearing more about it in more detail soon. It kicks off in June, but you could get ready. You could sign up as soon as you're hearing this. Use the links in our show notes. The fundraiser starts uh, June 3rd, and that's the Stop Hate fundraiser event from Alicia Stella at Park Stop. So join. Be a part of it. It's fun. Uh, that's the thing. Supporting other people, being a part of community, it, it help, You know, it does help you get a good night's sleep. Oh, Mystery Bart. A lot of people help out in the show. Who are they? It's posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bart. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. Uh, if you can get your Sleep With Me branded sleep phones at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use Sleep With Me uh, to save five bucks on your order. And uh, what do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble saying, trouble, st- trouble, trouble pronouncing things or staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to try to do the rest. 
What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts uh, about the past, the present, the future. It could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally. It could be changes in time, temperature, routine. You could be dealing with something. You could be just getting over something. You could be traveling. You could have guests. Uh, you could be going through something tough. Uh, whatever it is, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff so that you could fall asleep. I'm also here to let you know, even though it feels that way, uh, you're not alone in the deep, dark night. The reason I kind of go through all that stuff is so you know... You know, I might not know exactly what you're going through. I might have never been through it, but I, I can guess I, I can probably relate to how it feels. And there's probably someone listening right now that can strongly relate to how it feels or had been through something very similar. And that's why I make the show, because it's like I know it's not easy, right? It's tough. So that's one reason I make the show. The other reason I make the show is because. Not only have I been there, but I really believe you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a bedtime you could look forward to or at least feel neutral about. A bedtime you don't have to dread, uh, like especially like for, for people like me, uh, start dreading it on like Friday night or dreading uh, Sunday night trying to go to sleep. So that's why I make the show. If your life is better because you got the sleep you need to, to, or your life's more manageable, that's a huge victory and it's important. And if you're out there able to live your life a little bit more fully, that's important to me. And, and I really do believe it makes our world a better place. If you're out there operating, uh, and, and you can be yourself and you, you don't even have to be at your best. I, I, don't, I like, uh, no pressure. Uh, that's why there's no pressure to fall asleep. No pressure. Sleep with me. No pressure to be your best. No, pro like, uh, no pressure. You could say, well, you know, I, I, I would like to think about being my best, you know, sleep with me, the podcast where you don't have to be at your best. Can you, and that's kind of actually one of the things that works about the show is like, imagine if someone said, I'm coming over, but you don't have to be at your best. Uh, I'm going to come over to your place. You don't have to host me and you don't have to be at your best. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll come like there was a song Nirvana had, Come As You Are, right? I don't know what that meant, so, but uh, like, uh, uh, come as you are, come as you were. But uh, come as you, so I better look, well, it's too late now. But like uh, you'd say, I'll come as you are to your place. And, and then in this sense, I'm here to, to, to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company so that you fall asleep. So you don't even have to entertain me. Luckily, I'm just a digital being in this situation. so. There's no crumbs. You don't have to wonder, did I close all the doors? Did I turn out all the lights? No. Yeah, no, I did. I did. Uh, I'm just here to talk to you and keep you company while you fall asleep. As I said before, this podcast does not work for everybody, and most people dislike it on their first couple tries, or just the majority of people, because it is so different. That's one reason. Another reason is you probably are skeptical. You probably tried tons of different stuff to help you fall asleep. You're probably frustrated. If you're like me, you spent a ton of money on different things and tested out gadgets and methods and all those things, and nothing has worked consistently. And I guess I'll be honest with you. That's what it means. Like, you don't have to be at your best. What I found is having a good bedtime routine, having a good bedtime routine, it works most of the time for me, not all of the time. And, and hopefully sleep with me could be a part of that for you, but it does take some getting used to because you say, this doesn't sound very sleepy. Uh, this is more a little bit, sh I'm not, this isn't what I expected. I thought you would be more uh, Zen, you know, Zen like or relaxed. And I say, oh boy, uh, if I was relaxed, I wouldn't make a sleep. Pot. I mean, I'm relaxed right now. Actually, I'm sitting in a car. This may be, this is a fairly relaxed position. My hand I'm holding the mic with is on the arm, the armrest. I'm in the driver's seat and I'm left-handed, which works great for recording in a car that has a left armrest on the door. And then my right hand is on that, um, the thing that's on the left-hand side of the car that you used to hold on, uh, you know, so you can pretend like you're on a bus or, or, or a subway or something. And, uh, yeah, I'm just sitting here. 
Oh, what was my point, though? Relax. Oh, most people don't like the show uh, just because it's very different. And uh, some of the things that are different about the show, one, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of barely listen, just like I'm your guest. You don't have to be at your best. You don't have to greet me. You don't even have to pretend to listen. You could pretend to listen and say, uh-huh, Scoots. Uh, I hear you talking. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of listening. Yeah, I know you're in a car. Why are you in a car? Well, I could explain that maybe if we get, get to it. Um, but you know, don't worry. You just, okay. I forgot. Yeah. You're in the car, probably a pillow cloud-based car anyway. So I'm not really, I didn't, I was really only asking to be, and I say, oh, don't worry. You don't have to be polite with this show. So it's a podcast you just kind of barely listen to. There's no pressure to listen. There's also no pressure to fall asleep. This show's over an hour. So you have plenty of time and there's over 575 free episodes in the archives, ready to go on demand. So you could listen to a bunch in a row, or as you become a regular listener, you could pick which, oh, I like this style of episode the best. That's why we always have a variety of episodes coming out. So you say, oh, okay, I'm just going to make a playlist of these ones that work for me. Uh, but the other reason there's no pressure to fall asleep, because there's people out there who can't sleep. I'm here to keep you company, not put you to sleep. Uh, I'm here to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep, or you need a break during the day. So I'm here talking for you and for some other people that are listening too. Uh, and you, you, yeah, that's, I think what works. Some people are listening, but you might eventually stop listening to me and fall asleep and you, you might not know when that's what hopefully will happen. That I'm, cause I'm really here to be a, a, a friendly voice in the deep dark night, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bra. Uh, you, if we were going on a road trip, it'd be a board trip. Uh, it'd be like, it'd be like a Sunday drive that, you know, lasts, uh, I don't know. I've never been a fan of Sunday drives, even though I make a podcast that is like a Sunday drive. But I guess if I went on Sunday drives, I could record them as podcast episodes. Once they get those self, you know, driving cars, especially if they're cloud-based, I could get to work on that. But, um... So, oh, what else do you need to know? Podcast, you don't really, oh, structure the show is very different, but it's structured in a very specific way. So the reason the podcast is structured the way it is, is uh, it, sh- it starts out with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So if you're seen and welcomed in, you say, oh, okay, uh, I could check this podcast out. I'll see how it goes. Uh, then there's support for the show so it can be free and uh and come out regularly twice a week and then there's a long meandering intro which is separate from the support but for some reason when people i don't understand like they don't like the support but then they lump the intro with in with the support the intro is about 20 somewhere between 15 and 25 minutes of me rambling that's meant to go it's kind of like the transition period right the intro it's different every time for regular listeners it follows the same structure where I try to introduce the podcast that I've made for, I don't know, is this my 10th year making the show over almost 1,200 episodes, uh, but I still have not gotten a, a succinct way. It may be the first time I've said succinct on the podcast, and I think, but I, uh, yeah, this like like uh, succinct, uh, what do you call a suspended sink, succinct? Uh, what do you call a sus- 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 suspended sink full of tea? Succinct. Uh, but that, oh, you're right. I guess it would be, well, if it was full of the, just one letter T, not T. Okay. Crickets um, within my head. Um, oh, it's structure. Oh, the intro goes on and on and on uh, because the intro is meant to ease you into bedtime, to be part of your wind down. Now, there are some listeners that we're so happy for that are uh, asleep or falling asleep. And a lot of people have partners that are asleep. Oh, boy, are we happy for those partners. Really, seriously, we're so, we're, we're so happy for you. My fingers are not crossed, but that's only... My, le- um, my legs are not crossed uh, symbolically like my fingers. They are, though. Um, 
And then there's some listeners, like about 2% of people that start the show at 20, 25, or 30 minutes uh, to skip the intro. But for the majority of listeners, the intro is the transition from being awake to asleep. So a lot of people are doing some sort of other relaxing activity, getting ready for bed, or they're in bed getting comfortable. And that's what the intro does. And that's just like I said earlier, that's what's been shown to work in most studies. And is what's worked for me personally. It's just having a time that I look forward to every night. And right now, uh, I'm back with Tommy and Tuppets. I think it's the last Tommy and Tuppets book by Agatha Christie. And so tonight it'll be Tommy and Tuppets time. Tuppets time. Uh, how scoots, what do you call a suspended sink with uh, Tommy and uh, full of Tommy and Tuppets mysteries? Succinct up and Tommy tub sub sub. Oh, but what it could be in a bathtub, tub, tub, tubbins. What do you call Tommy and Tubbins in a tub? Tubbins. Okay, these jokes don't make any sense, but that's fine. That's what's leaving with me. So that's what the intro is for. Uh, and I understand that people get mixed up with it because, uh, like, uh, some people just have a strong reaction to the the idea that the show needs support and that there's a ton of work that goes into the show to make it sound free and easy. But the intro is is separate from that. Uh, then there's support after the intro. Then we'll talk about The Mandalorian. And if you've never seen The Mandalorian, don't worry about it. Or if you have, this is going to be, uh, I, I'm, I'm recording two episodes this week. So I'm trying to think, uh, which have what happened in the last episodes, uh, but I don't even know right now, even though I'm, I, you know, I have to go, I work out of a notebook. Uh, that's why this podcast works so well. My, my mind retains, my mind's like, uh, it's a bit like Swiss cheese. Uh, if there was ever a Swiss cheese made of one of those mold based cheeses, like, uh, like that, you'd say that's, that looks like a, that, that, that's probably what I imagine in the inside of your brain. And I say, yeah, that's what it's like between my ears. It's like a blue, it's like a, I don't know if what's Roquefort is, uh, or Cambrai, but, um, Gorgon, yeah, it's like a Swiss Gorgonzola and I could not spell that. Okay. So, oh, that's what the intro is. Yeah. Then we'll talk about the Mandalorian and then we'll talk about, oh, then we have some thank yous at the end of the show. So that's a structure show. That's why I make the show. Why I'm in a car. Well, we had, a, um, so I make the podcast from my apartment. And my apartment is, uh, like upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, upstairs, downstairs apartments where the downstairs is where the bedrooms are. It's kind of built into the side of, uh, not a hill, but the downstairs, it has windows, but the back half is built into the ground. So kind of like a half basement. I don't know what you call it. Upstairs, downstairs is what I call it. So the bedrooms are downstairs and then the kitchen and the bathroom and the living room is the upstairs. And while I was out of town, um, some, and it wasn't weather related, which is ultimate irony here in California. Some, a little bit of water poo got in the downstairs or more than a little water poo, uh, leaked in, um, from an old pipe. Uh, I think it was, a, a, a like a rose, not a, a, like some sort of rose, like pricker bush went down. Well, I saw everything that happened when, when they, they dug it out and then they found the pipe and then they found that it had a crack in it and it was leaking down actually like through a hole in like the foundation or whatever into the basement where the rooms are. And the stairs, it's not, it, it has like one of those half staircases. Cause it's not a, like a huge place. I call it the houseboat. Um, and so it has like a half set of stairs and that was like right where the the leak went, um, uh, you're, it's tough to describe, but it went under the stairs too. And that's where I usually record the podcast. I call it the climb-in closet. That was the second climb-in closet that I've uh, recorded in. Well, that's going to be a long intro. Um, and it got filled with water. There was like carpet. And I don't know what, ha I haven't had a chance to test out the podcasting equipment yet. The good news is it was like prosumer podcasting equipment. I have renter's insurance. So not a huge loss as far as financially. Um, now I did, there, there was also two mattresses that I used to, to, cause it's an apartment, um, to shield the climbing closet does not have a door. 
And so I had two old mattresses in front of the climbing closet. That's what, what I would like climb into to get into the closet. I'd kind of shove my body between these mattresses and through the doorway under the stairs. And there was moving blankets and curtains and stuff. Uh, that's why the podcast sounds so sleepy or one of the reasons. And, um, so right now we're just in a transition phase. I do have a very responsible landlord. So, uh, the carpet already got torn up and, or all removed. And then the floor of like, uh, I don't know if it's a slab or the cement is being dried. So everything's being dried out and then they're going to put in flooring, um, instead of carpet, uh, which is smart. And so then once that happens, then I'll try to rebuild, like I'll test out the old, the podcasting equipment. And then I'll probably, uh, I have an old rug that I'll put in down there and then I'll start to reassemble things. So yeah, that's why I'm recording from a car and, uh, these things happen. It was a surprise to me. I got, a, and, but it wasn't, you know, it was one of those things that really like, I can tell you from the sleep podcast, like I learned from all the listeners and from some of the fiction on the show, like all will be well, because I would have thought I got home at like one in the morning, I got ready for bed upstairs where the bathroom is. And then I had my Kindle, I had Tommy and Tuppets ready to go. And then I went downstairs and discovered this and it was nothing I could do about it. I checked everywhere to make sure there was nothing in my place leaking. And there, and, and I said, well, I just said, guess I'll go to bed. My bed's, all, you know, not on the floor. So. Uh, and I'll uh, get a hold of my landlord in the morning and I, all will be well. There's nothing I can do about it. And I honestly, like if you would have told me like that was going to happen, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not uh, resilient enough to handle that. I'd be too tired and too, you know, uh, that just sounds like too much. It really wasn't too much. Uh, and I'm not just telling you this to kind of soothe you or put your mind at ease. It's like, really the things I learned from listeners who tell me their stories of what they're dealing with. And I said, and it's not like I'm like saying to myself, Oh, it's not a hassle or a big deal or anything. It is, but it's like, uh, it's not all, it's all, it's not always as bad as it seems to my, uh, Gorgonzola, uh, Swiss brain. Um, and that's refreshing. Like, uh, and I've only learned that by making the show and from hearing from listeners and stuff like that. So I can tell you, like, and that's why I share like that. There's a bunch of people listening right now who might have gone through what you're going through, because I had heard from a bunch of p other listeners that places got flooded out and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's it's tough, but it's uh, it's not the end of the world. And it's like something that's like, okay, I got a lot of other stuff. I have a responsible landlord, um, which is in this place I've lived uh, for about four or five years. Uh, if it was another time, like I would have had a tough time getting a hold of somebody. So, um, I'm really lucky. And, uh, like I can tell you, like, yeah, I mean, I don't like saying all will be well, or you got to be at your best or stuff, but like Emma Otter can say it fictionally, the characters say, don't worry, all will be well. And I think that's where it comes through a little bit easier in the subtext, which I'm not using right now because I'm just being direct with you. And, uh, that's why I'm recording a car. I'm lucky to have somebody uh, whose place I could stay at for a little while. And I'm lucky that uh, I, I'm able to come record in their car or park my car in here tomorrow while they're gone and record the show and try to figure out uh, and be flexible with equipment and stuff like that, figure out what's going on with this um, and uh, go from there. So thank you so much for listening. This is why I love making the show. I don't know if you could hear that. Like, uh, like, I love being able to make the show and be able to make it from a car right now. I love The Mandalorian. I love talking about The Mandalorian. I love writing sleepy stories. I love paying attention and saying, huh, could this be material for the show? And I love being able to help other people who are going through something I can relate to that's not easy, that might feel lonely in the deep, dark night. That's why I'm honored to be here and I really do appreciate you coming by. Uh, and maybe I'm a little bit more vulnerable because I'm off my routine. It's always good, man. Uh, a little bit of, uh, well, what, what was that big word? I, I used a big word earlier. T, synchro, not synchronicity, though. 
whatever it was. Uh, but, uh, I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by. Uh, and here's a couple ways I'm able to do this for you for free choice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, home of the Name Your Price tool. You say how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you the coverage options to fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote. Visit Progressive.com to get started. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. Uh, Scoots here. We're talking about uh, Chapter 5. Uh, no, no. Episode five, chapter 21, uh, the pirates, the pirates. And the last time stuff comes up, uh, with a scene I don't remember from, I don't know, I guess it was from last season, uh, with, uh, the Mandalorian, uh, Paz Vasala, Vasala, and then maybe the armorer. A talk in dark saber and the Mandalorians are not holding it though. Oh yeah, the armors armorer is holding it. Uh, talks about taking it from Moff Gideon. That uh, Moff Gideon was sent to the New Republic uh, to face justice. Uh, Paz Paz Vassal didn't like that. Then we see the uh, the like the kind of thing from the last episode of getting the birds out. Uh, Baby birds, Bo-Katan, Kreez, you have the highest honor, you get help to Frownling. Then they go to Navarro, we see Navarro, the construction boom, hot springs, almost like a stool boom. Uh, hey, Mando, come work here. What about the New Republic? Nah, we don't need their help. Uh, we don't do, we don't want, you know. And then we see some pirate activity. And the Mando says, is there a problem here? And the pirates say, well, there's about to be one. Is there a problem here, Magistrate? Because there won't be, because I'm the Mandalorian. I guess these fellas forgot that. Uh, and the one guy runs off. Then Mando and Baby Oso take out the pirate planes. We see the big pirate ship. We see Gorian Shard, who is some sort of... um. Uh, I don't know if he's like covered in, um, what is that stuff called? Like not confetti, uh, but that stuff, like kind of stuff, like it looks like it could be either stuff from under the sea, like seaweed or the stuff you make pom-poms out of, uh, but green. He's, a, he was a pirate king, King Gorian Chart. King, I guess, you know, probably somewhere they sang songs about him, uh, King of the Pirates. And this episode opens with uh, a ship landing at the Navarro spaceports. Music playing. We only see part of IG-88. And then we get a cool shot of some planning. Uh, trade district. Let's move the trade district closer to the, um, what is this called? Urban planning? Uh, it's uh, Grief Karga, Another uh, droid that I don't recognize, not that I recognize any of them, but a uh, very uh, slim model, shiny though. And then to uh, urban planning, is that what it's called? City planning, urban planning, uh, outer, I guess, uh, village planning. But yeah, they're t they have like a 3D model. Let's move the shipping district or trade district, shipping terminals. Where's the rail spur? Well, we got to put it in. The, it's a bit like playing the game The Sims. Uh, let's put a rail spur in there. We got a lot of cargo. And then there's a bunch of noise and yelling outside. Uh, he goes out on this balcony, clamor, it says in the things. And we see shadow come over the town. And it's Gorian Shard's ship, uh, striped and all, bird-like. He says, what in the heck? Uh, and a droid says, it's a pirate corsair, uh, airspace of the population zone. Shall I negotiate? No, no, no. We're not setting a precedent here. No negotiations. You're being hailed, sir. Okay, get everybody to safety. I'll deal with this. Engineers, good work. We'll talk later. And there's also another droid making a bunch of noise. Gorian Shard comes in in 3D, FaceTime. Extra large. Uh, hey, I thought that was your ship, Shard. What up? Uh... I don't believe my eyes. Uh, Grief Karga dressed up. Uh, I thought you were in the guild. Now you're all fancy. You're dressed in fancy pants. Uh, a pampered nobleman uh, dressed for the pomp of his wedding feast. 
And man or grief says, believe your ears if you don't believe your eyes. You don't mistake my hospitality for weakness. He goes, what about my helmsman? He goes, uh, yeah, they started it, dude. Uh, and he goes, well, I'm about to start something else. It's a patchy signal, even though they're right overhead. Maybe you need some more Wi-Fi. And he says, Navarro's under the protection of the New Republic. And the shard says, I, I, I heard you were independent. Uh, you're not under the protection of Moff Gideon anymore. They say, he says, the Spinyard Patrol comes through here. And Gorian Shard just laughs. He says, they can't even protect the mid-rim, man. You think I got time for the outer rim? No way. This isn't Sabak. You're bluffing. And by the way, you know, I could see, you can't see, uh, see through my, uh, seaweed face, but I could see through you. And then, uh, he goes back out, uh, grief cargo looks, he says, he calls another droid over, uh, some sort of astromech droid. Now that I'm, I mean, I think, uh, he puts some secret thing in there. And then we see the pirates, they start, uh, dropping water balloons on the town. And everybody's like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, this is disturbing our, you know, especially if you're counting money or doing something with paper, it really messes you up. So everybody tries to get out of there because people are like, I'm doing paperwork. Uh, and the droid comes and says, your escape pod's ready. And he says, take this, dro like, we got to leave this droid. We're going to go with the people of the city, though. We're not getting out of here. So everybody's leaving town. It's getting wetter and wetter. More and more, and I'm not talking regular water balloons. These are seriously uh, big water balloons. Everybody's running out of there because they say, wait a second, my clothing's not, you know, I just dyed my clothes. They're not fully dry. Great effects, by the way. Holy cow. Title sequence, The Mandalorian or The Mandalorian. Chapter 21, The Pirates. And then we see some C, we see, uh, this is like, uh, we get a, like a little bit of top gun action or, I mean, like, uh, like we get this tropical base, uh, and I don't mean like, I mean a base for ships, uh, new Republic ships, uh, on the beach and it's got like rock and music playing. What else I got here for my notes? Let me just take a look here. But yeah, it looks like a cool base. It's even got a bar uh, where people are hanging out. Don't hail me again. E oh yeah, by the way, uh, Goran Shard hangs up on uh, Grief Karga. Uh, help is on the way. Grief Karga speech. Uh, help is on the way. March out of town. Binox. Okay, this is, oh no, this is coming up. Uh, oh, where's the base then? Oh, here it is on this other page. Okay, chapter 21, Captain Tava, that's coming up here. Oh, yeah, Tropical Planet, Top Gun Style, Hangar Bar, Chill Time, message for you. Can I use, use like, a? let's get to it here. A hit play. Forget one of those. Uh, everybody's, everybody's happy here. Different style uniforms, blue or orange. But they call these 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 ex these pilots blues, I guess. Lively chatter, it says, and everybody's drinking. I don't know if they're drinking that stuff they make on that planet. Message for Teva, uh, Captain Teva, and he, he doesn't have a reader at that moment. Can I use your viewer? Sure. Hey, why don't you do it publicly? We, you know, we can you can only watch your messages out on speakerphone. Nobody's reading at the bar, so it doesn't bother them. Or they say, can you, t can you use headphones with that dude? Um, says, Grief Car, we're dealing with Gorian Shard. Uh, you offered help if I reached out. And I'm reaching out. New Republic. Uh, we need some patrolling out here. And I don't ask for your aid lightly. This is not a great situation. So uh, can you get out here? You don't want pirates running our planet. It'll be a base, a Shard base. And Tava looks, some other dude comes up. Too bad. I thought Navarro was chill town, man. And he goes, I'm going to forward it to Coruscant. Can I have your permission? So I guess that's his uh, officer. He goes, yeah, they're swamped. They'll never get back to you. So Tava says, what if I go there myself? And I don't know how long that would take with hyperspace. Uh, 
I'll do it face to face. And the commander says, I like your attitude. Good luck. You're going to need it. He strolls out of there. Now, Tava, we saw rescue the Mandalorian at one point on that ice or frog planet. You know, some of the, the planet with uh, where uh, Grogu was trying to eat the uh, frog eggs. Then we see Coruscant and his X-Wing's going in. Then we see, like, one of those New Republic towers. He's strolling right up. I don't know where you park an X-Wing, like, within, but it must be a nice walking distance. So plenty of parking on Coruscant, it seems like. Then we see another office with cubicles, and Tava goes in. And we get a famous face, Tim Meadows, uh, but we also get another famous face, uh, K.O.B. is in the house. Uh, uh, but Tim Meadows says, uh, hey, these astromech droids get the hardest time. A lot of discs. Uh, they have a lot of discs on this uh, on this planet. And, uh, and the New Republic loves uh, like uh, almost floppy discs or SD cards. So they don't store anything in the cloud, apparently. I mean, which I guess makes sense. You know, keep your information secure. So, uh, but Tava storms in, says, I need to talk to you. He says, you scoot. I said, like, scooter? Uh, he scoots the droid out of there, sits down. Carson Tava, who, who are you? Carson Tava, Delphi base. Whoa, boy, Delphi, that's way out there. What can I do for you? Yeah, I need some backup for Adelphi Squadron. We got uh, pirates in Navarro. Navarro? Not yeah, never heard of it. Uh, Outer Rim. Uh, High Magistrate, uh, the main city, sent this message. Uh, so he puts it in his viewer. And he's got a little bit smaller viewer. It says, yeah, we got Sh- 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 Gor- Gorian Shard, uh, pirates. You know, you said you'd help. Uh, and, uh, you know, can you send in Tim Meadows says, I've seen enough. Uh, I get the gist. Yes. Yeah, concerning. And then, uh, uh, KOB comes in, Katie O'Brien. She says, Hey, you need anything from the commissary? He goes, Oh wait, you've been at the out. Have you ever heard of Navarro KOB? Yeah, I have. Uh, I know I'm a numbers person, but, uh, yeah, they didn't sign the charter charter. So they're not really in the new Republic. And he goes, Oh, Oh, that's no good. Tava goes, what's the matter? They're under, you know, they're dealing with the pirates. Yeah, I got, we got a backlog here, dude. And members only, you know, I don't have a members only jacket, but if I did, uh, and he says, yeah, he goes, uh, this is weird. You know, the, the, uh, there's stuff going on there. Moff Gideon occupied the town, now a pirate king. Don't you think this is strange? This could all be connected. And he says, that's a bit of a leap. Uh, he goes, I heard Moff Gideon got away. Colonel Tuttle's that guy's name. He goes, by the way, there's this is requisitions. So let's focus on requisitions. Uh, what do you need? He goes, uh, authorization and backup for dealing with p- p- pirates. Uh, and KOB says maybe uh, maybe they should become a Republican signature Republic signatory. Uh, and he goes that's very imperial. So he goes, what do you got a chip on your shoulder, Tava, about the Empire? And Katie O'Brien says, don't worry, I can handle it. Uh, guy just doesn't understand. Uh, I'm reformed. Uh, I see the light. Uh, and he goes, uh, oh G sixty eight. Uh, she goes, no. He goes, yeah, no, you got busted. She goes, no, I got liberated. And they go, anyway, Tava, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Maybe, you know, who knows? Uh, we'll file a report uh, in triplicate. Uh, and he says, there's something going on out there. This is not a coincidence. And by the time we know about it, it'll be too late. And they glares at everybody. Uh, Tim Meadows just stares him down with like a, like a non plus look, I guess. But Katie O'Brien, whatever, G68, she follows him with a bit of a look like this guy is up to trouble. Then we see a little, then we see a little exodus from uh, Navarro getting away from the water balloons. And uh, they get to like a clearing and Grief Cargo says, all right, time for me to make a speech. You know, I'm the leader here. 
And first uses his binox, looks at the pirate ship, looks at town, uh, water. There's water out on everything. Uh, shakes his head. Everybody's setting up. Uh, and he goes, okay, everybody, it's me. Uh, don't worry. I sent, I sent a message. Uh, we'll, we'll just camp here for a little bit and then, uh, help will arrive soon. Very soon. What? Who's coming here? How could you, how do you know? Well, I got a message from New Republic. New Republic? They're a joke. Uh, they're not going to help us. Uh, he says, don't worry. Then we see an X-Wing entering the atmosphere. Land of lakes. The lakes we know. Uh, mountainous desert lakes. And Tava's, uh, Carson Tava, he's following some sort of signal. And the the man who, can, you know, once again, we find out who cannot keep a covert secret. Uh, it's our main character. And Tava sees uh, Bo-Katan's ship. He sets in for a landing. But it's not Bo-Katan. It's uh, the droid, spoiler, the droid that uh, Mandalorian bought on was that not was it Tatooine or something but yeah he gets out of his ship uh we see some mandalorians hiding he's got an r2 unit with green instead of blue he goes towards the cave where the covert is and he puts his arms out he says hey by the way cat carson captain carson tava the delphi rangers uh come in peace uh, wouldn't come here, but I got a pressing matter. They call him Blue Boy, Paz Vala, Vassal, or whatever. It says, hit the road. We don't want any new republic. Uh, and he goes, well, if I called first, you would have left. Uh, so, and then Mandalorian comes out. How'd you find us? Uh, your droid, by the way. Uh, that droid you bought, uh, two weeks ago, that droid, I've been following it. Uh, it's a spy. First Mandalorian's like, who's the spy? Oh, my droid is. What? Well, good thing. Thanks, R5. Good thing Mandalorian's like the dominant. Uh, he goes, by the way, we're going to have to relocate. And they go, well, we could keep this guy here as one, you know. And the Mandalorian goes, this guy saved my, saved my rear end, so clear out blue. He goes, oh, your friend gave me a whole hollow message. Now I have a viewer. I borrowed one from uh, somebody. And it's a portable one. One of those palm viewers that you hear about. Uh, I got, you know, I got a two-year uh, lease on it, so do I got to bring it back? Uh, Mandalorian puts it in his pocket. He goes, "They're good." He goes, "There's pirates on Navarro, and no one in the New Republic cares. So you're gonna have to do something. It's your friend." And Mando goes, "What do you want anyway?" And Tavis says, "This is weird, man." Got to watch out for the Empire. The Spirit could be involved in it somehow. Something's not right. And uh, he goes, I just came to let you know, you know, your friend's in trouble, so. And then Bo-Katan struts out, struts up to the Mandalorian as uh, Tava gets ready to leave. He goes, I know you're going to have to relocate, but he goes, don't worry, I'm not going to tell anybody where you are. Sorry to intrude. He takes off. And so we see lift off. And Bo Katan says, What are you thinking? And Mando says, Well, technically, I got to help him. He's one of my best friends. Uh, she says, You can't do it alone. So then we go to the, um, like a meeting where they, you hold the sharing hammer. And uh, he says, Everybody's, I owe everybody a favor. Grief Karga. That dude that just left, uh, even though we had to fight, you know, we got kicked off of Navarro, all of us, uh, and, uh, you know, probably some of the, you know, he goes, we still, I got to go rescue him in Navarro, even though they weren't accepting of Mandalorians and they battled us, they did try to catch me. He goes, that's because I saved this cute little baby that they were trying to give away to the Empire, but they're good people. He goes, I'm going to go there. However, uh, he goes, it wasn't them that did it. It was uh, the Empire, not the people in Navarro or Grief Karga. He's a high magistrate. He's got uh, coat droids or something. Maybe we could get us some land there. Or perhaps it's time for us to live in the light again. 
on a planet where we are welcome so our culture may flourish and our children may feel what it's to play in sunlight. And we zoom on Oso, who likes the speech. Papa's given a speech. So Oso's one proud uh, baby. And Man- Mando says, okay. And then the armor stands up and uh, says, anybody else got a speech to make? Uh, who wants to hold the sharing hammer? Uh, anyone. Anyone wish to hold the sharing hammer? Mando, Mando says uh, to, to uh, I think it's going to work out. And then Paz Vassal stands up, uh, says, I wish to hold the sharing hammer. She says, you now have the sharing hammer. It is your time to share. He goes, yeah, I was there on Navarro. Like, what? He goes, I can't believe what, that you're asking us to help Grief Karga and the, uh, the bounty team. He was like, the, and there was Empire there. You know, they, they chased after us. And, uh, for this one little, uh, cute little baby, Oso, uh, we, we lost our home, you know, now we have to sacrifice again and everybody starts chattering. He says, I have the sharing hammer, by the way, because the question we should be asking ourselves, why, why get involved in this? Why should we put our, you know, life, you know, like whatever water balloons, the whole nine yards. Everybody goes, good point, good point. Why is always a good point. And he goes, the reason why? We're Mandalorians. M-A-N-D-O, you know, M-A-N-D-O-D-A-L-O-R-A-N-S, uh, Mandalorians, uh, but it's M-A-N-D-A. And he goes, bo Don Kreese, you know, help my kid get away from a bird nest. Uh, he goes, this is a brighter future today. Uh, if we help them. So I say with my sharing hammer, we do it. This is the way. And everybody says, this is the way. And I think the armor says, this is the way. Okay. So then they go to bo ship. Uh, we'll drop a couple teams in. I'll be the leader. Uh, do, you know, we'll have two ships in the uh, atmosphere. We'll do a little distracting. And we have an element of surprise. So then they go through hyperspace. I don't think we see any hyper whales. And then they talk about the ship, uh, snub fighters, uh, air, you know, water balloons. Uh, say N one N one will be the distraction. I'll drop you in. You liberate. Uh, and yeah, they're not under protection of the Empire or the New Republic. So. Uh, this is independence. Maybe they'll let us settle. You already lived there once in the sewers. Uh, maybe now you can be heroes uh, every day. So they come out of space, hyperspace. We see the, the uh, planet. We see Navarro. And then, the, okay, so what time is this at? Okay, so if you don't watch this episode for some reason, it's at 20 minutes. Uh, and if you're a fan of theme parks in Disney World or Disneyland, uh, there's a, a sequence now that is absolutely spectacular, which is, I, I, it's got to be a tribute to Pirates of the Caribbean. So it's like, uh, starts off showing Navarro and it's smoking and then pirates are, it's just like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's so good. I mean, a little bit different, but, uh, yeah, they kick over food, they're drinking they're bugging droids. They're bugging shopkeeps. Uh, they're arguing among themselves. Yeah, they're they're giving high fives and jugs of drinks to one another. Uh, they're drunk on this doorstep, uh, two of them, and laughing it up. Uh, then they uh, there's the uh, tree kind of the tree tree animals. Uh, they bug those tree animals. Then they see the M1 in the sky. And they just laugh because it's just a Mandalorian. Uh, but they don't expect him. So they say, there's a starfighter off our port bow, Shard. And Mando takes out one of their engines right away. He goes, it's the Mandalorian. Man the gun whales. So pirates hop into action. That's the thing with the, they say, hit the hit ship with a water balloon. And Mandalorian just laughs. Uh, and they says, launch the snub fighters. We'll have to figure this out, and we can follow him in our ship. And Oso and Mando are uh, in there. That other pirate says, oh, Mandalorian. Uh, 
and they try they try to take the Mando out, but uh, one down. And Griff Cargo watches it. Says Mando, what's up? Uh, yeah, you're taking up on, us up on our offer. Eh? Be careful, my friend. Ten to one. So that was eleven, I guess. And now we're down to nine. Oh no, ten. So that now we're down to eight. Uh, and the Mando moves. They try to chase him. I don't see anything else go down yet. Corsairs on me. Coast is clear for uh, Bo Katan's teams. So Bo Katan calls in, approaching drop point. Get ready. Everybody gets ready. And one team uh, uh, jets down, first team. And they surprise the pirates who are acting like a Pirates of the Caribbean. So they're surprised. And we even see the Anzalians. Uh, who can't believe it. And first, you know, they deal with some pirates pretty quick. Uh, but then we realize, then Team 2 gets there. They say, Team 2, what up? And they say, yeah, we're moving towards the courtyard. Then we see the Mandalorian, three snub fighters. Oh, now we're down uh, to seven. And uh, they say, we're on, N on the N1. Mando, one, two, three, four, five, I saw. And Mando says, all right, I'm going to pull him away from the ship. You go towards the big ship. So she does. bo they see a, a, a Cormac fighter transports. She takes out an engine. Maybe that was the first one that gets taken out. Uh, tell Vane and the others to uh, get away. He says, they're after the Mandalorian. Bring them back. It looks like he has a little clover in his hair. Okay, so then there's two ships chasing the Mandalorian. Vane's one of them. They say, Vane, you can't, you got to stop chasing the Mandalorian. It's a decoy. He says, I don't care to listen to you. Regroup with the Corsair. So they actually do, actually they do listen. Okay, then we see Mandalorians looking for pirates. Slowly, pirates are wait. Then the pirates are kind of setting them up. But the, um, the tree cats or whatever they say, they're over there hiding. You know, pirates weren't nice to us. Maybe you Mandalorians will be. Okay, then we have everybody chasing each other and shooting lasers. I, you know, just like in fish, they say, I hate laser beams. But the Mandalorians are kind of cornered. Uh, it kind of worked temporarily. I can't remember what happens next. They say, yeah, we're boxed in, caught in a crossfire. And they lay low, but uh, I think Team 2 shows up. Uh, oh, no, Piz, Paz Vasala shows up, uh, and he's got that serious— Oh, no, that's Team 2, yeah. They show up, uh, and f f first— Oh, wow, that's some cool moves. But, yeah, they make quick work out of uh, out of them. Uh, but then they head towards like the main town. Oh, actually, yeah, toward, towards Grief Cargo's office. But the pirates have a total thing set up, uh, like one of those big water cannons on uh, Grief out of Grief Cargo's office. They don't even need water balloons. And uh, and so the, the Mandalorians are kind of like, holy cow, this is a serious water cannon. Uh, then we go back to the space. Uh, and a little too nimble, uh, there's five uh, snub fighters there. Is that how many I had left? I don't think so. I thought I had seven left. But uh, So Bo-Katan uh, heads, there's three or four on her tail. There, one more goes down, Mandalorian takes it. Uh, then he takes down another one. He takes down another one, which also takes down another engine. Uh, and they say, we can't believe this dank ferric, you know. Nothing like smoking some dank ferric, I guess. Then the armorer shows up where they um, have the, uh, what do you call that thing? The uh, the big water cannon. But they don't know she's there because it makes so much noise. So she uses her tongs and she says, uh, by the way, these tongs are made for tonging and that's just what they'll do. Today's the day these tongs are going to tong all over you. And she tongs them right out of there. And then the Mandalorian say, okay, let's uh, retake this town. 
and the remaining pirates start to run, but they end up running right out of town, right into the, uh, the people that had left uh, Navarro who haven't, they, and then they have them surrounded led by Karga and then team two. So it's like, Oh boy, we're in trouble here. So the pirates that are left actually give up and they say, yeah, we got you. Then we see, I don't know who this was, but, um, there's somebody that's riding on a spaceship and they jump off. I think it's a Mandalorian, I guess. And then Vane bails on, oh yeah, he does have clover on his face. Uh, I would have liked to know, to get to know Gorian Shard a little better. He's like, I'll steer my own ship, uh, in a pig puffer's eye. We're going to take this town out. Vane's like, dude, I'm bailing on you. So he tur- turns towards town. Uh, and he tries to, he's trying to like wreck the buildings and stuff, uh, with water balloons. And Mando says, we'll just take out his other engine. Uh, I'm sure it'll work out. Uh, so Mando and, um, Bo-Katan, they, they, uh, they help, uh, take out the engine of the ship. And Gorian Shard says, oh no, not my ship. Uh, you sunk my, you sunk my Corsair, uh. And that's another really good effect, uh, or that I enjoyed. Uh, I thought it was really realistic. Uh, and everybody cheers. And even the um, droid mechanics. And then we have the Navarro facing off uh, with the people, the Mandalorians, and the pirates are getting busted. Grief Cargo says, time to make a speech. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody's cheering. Oso likes it. Uh, thanks for our Mandalorian liberators. Uh, we're forever indebted to you. And, you you know, you're all a mystery. He goes, I know we've been on opposite sides in the past, but uh, hoping we could work together. That's behind us now, right? From this day forward, I, Magistrate Grief Karga. Hi, Magistrate, one of the droids says. Everybody laughs. Hi, Magistrate. I know. He goes, I seed all land from the western lava flats to Bullock Canyon to the people of Mandalore. Does that include the secret base? I don't know. He goes, uh, you have a home, even though you don't have a home planet. So happy to do it. Welcome. Everybody cheers. Everybody's happy. Welcome. Thank you. That's great. Head nodding, cheering, applause. And clapping. And yeah, everybody's pretty pleased. And then Paz Vassal says to Bo Katan, Armor needs to talk to you. Well, a little one on one, well, almost one on one time, but I'll be there. And then we see uh, Paz Vassala leading, or whatever it is, leading Bo Katan down the stairs, spiral staircase. And they go into the, uh, I guess, oh no, they go through a tube room. Oh, yeah, this is where the uh, old forge was back when they were running the show here. And bo puts her arms behind her back. The armor is looking at the forge. Says, yeah, this was once our covert's forge. Now it's all busted up. And there's a forge on Mandalore, too. I've seen it. Uh, but uh, bo says, yeah, I've seen it, too. Cleans off their their hands. The armor was l- the one on you know Mandalore was large and ornate. A uh, hundred hammers at a time. And Bo-Katan says, "Uh huh." And here was a simple forge, right? Uh, just a simple, basic forge. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Both were forges, and both forged things. They served the same purpose: forging. Do you understand? Uh, Bo-Katan just kind of nods. Uh, and this random says, take your helmet off, remove your helmet. And she said, what? The armor says, do you respect my station? Yeah. Okay. Well then it's not a trick. This is not a test. Remove your helmet. Not a test. Uh, it's a test if you'll listen to me. Right. But I'm not sure which test, you know what I mean? Just take your helmet off, please. Okay. I'll take it off then. Are you sure it's not a test to test me? And takes her takes her helmet off. It moves ahead a couple times. Says, "Okay, I took it off." Is it was really this was was that a trick twa- test? And the armor says, "We strayed from the way. Uh, we got to find a new way to walk it together." 
uh, together. This is the way. Yeah, this is the way. Okay, we got to walk the way together. All Mandalorians, are you with me? And uh, uh, Bo-Katan says, yes, I understand the metaphors and actually what you're saying. I was taught the Mythosaur was only a legend, right? Armor says that, but you saw it. And by the way, that means uh, you're probably the one to lead us. Uh, the next stage is upon us. If uh, someone sees it, uh, Mandalore must all come together. Got me? Uh, you, bo have walked in both worlds. You're the one who can unite us. And bo says, that's not a lot of pressure. And she goes, just wait for the social pressure that's about to happen. So they stroll out to the Navarro kind of spaceports. And everybody's doing basic work. And first Grogu goes, what? And then the Mandalorian goes, what are you whatting about? And then Mandalorian says, bo has no helm on. And they say, remember what Scooter said about helmets and crumbs and helms and visors? Turns out he was right. Uh, I mean, kind of, uh, inadvertently. And you could see the awkwardness, you know, social pressure. bo is going to go off and bring other Mandalorians to us. So we may join together again. And they say, but she's got no helmet on. We can see her face. Uh, what's up with that? And the armor says, bo walks both worlds. So keep it to yourself. Uh, she's the one that's going to bring us together. And Oso says, okay. Uh, Paz Vassal just looks at the Mandalorian. Or Viz Pazal or whatever. Uh, it's time to retake Mandalore. Everybody got me? And we do a slow zoom. I'm bo who clearly says, I'm ready. Breathing through the nose, a little bit of breeze, and the episode comes to a close. Oh, no, it doesn't. Holy cow, I forgot. We fade to black, fade back in, stars, X-Wing coasting, beeping, and uh, we see Captain Tava is coming up on an Imperial shuttle that's not operating. It's got some cracks in it. And this is a nice kind of slow space sequence. Um, and he calls in to his boss or whatever, starts recording, puts on a flashlight, says, we need information about this ship. Uh, anybody got it? Uh, anyone? Tava to Lieutenant Reed. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a derelict Lombada shuttle, a hall breach. Uh, Something happened here. And they say there's no record of any craft like that in the region. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, there is. It's classified. Tavis says, classified this. Uh, R5 launch probe. So R- R5 has a built-in space probe in, his, in R5's head. Yeah, R2 had something similar. I don't know if it ever flew. But it's kind of like a flying. He goes, okay, I'm sending you this by signal. Uh, bounce it on the flight logs. Uh, and see if you can track anything down. And they shine the camera around. Okay, this is a New Republic transport. And looks like some people were on board. When did it depart? Uh, was the one with Moff Gideon? Yeah, this is it. This is the ship that Moff Gideon was on. I knew it. Never, he never got busted. That's terrible news. And they go, yeah, there's nothing else. Uh, there's only one more shady thing that's tough to comprehend. They say, what is that? Uh, he goes, well, this is some kind of distraction. Extraction, not distraction. They say, really? Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to do some, we're doing some scanning with laser lights, uh, kind of like concerts. And yeah, there's something in the wall, something metallic. It looks like Beskar armor to me, or Beskar something. Beskar, that would mean Mandalorians are involved. Uh, and he says, uh-huh, F- fragment of Beskar alloy. You telling me Mandalorians let Moff Gideon go? And that's where it comes to a close. Uh, and then we got uh, the first painting is of uh, the Corsair. Pirate Corsair, a uh, nice one. It's moving. Then uh, 
shot of uh, Gorian Shard on the throne or the helm, just sitting. Then tropical base, uh, uh, looking tropical. Uh, then inside a tropical base, people playing like uh, games and drinking, hanging out, chit-chatting. Then a Republic building. Uh, then the hammer share session, share hammer session with a, a nice uh, bonfire. Uh, then everybody that had left Novaro with the pirate ship in the sky in the distance. Then uh, over Gorian Shard's shoulder watching his ship move uh, into action. Uh, then action on Navarro with snub fighters and the ship water balloons. Uh, then the water balloon launchers. Uh, that's pretty cool shots. So water balloon launchers, then, uh, snub fighters trying to catch Mando unsuccessfully, clearly. Then, uh, I guess inside Navarro making a speech, Grief Cargo saying, you, you succeeded. And then the X-Wing with the Imperial fighter. Uh, that's the last thing we see, eh? Yeah, that's the last painting. Uh, let me see how much we got in our notes here to look up. Uh, oh, wait, the next episode's starting. I'm, at, I'm doing this on my computer because I'm in a ca my car recording because uh, the... Uh, well, you probably listen to the intro, so or you're sleeping. Okay, what else do we need to know here? Uh, we could look up Teva. Why are they called Blue Boys? Um, okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, Carson Teva. This is on Wikipedia. Uh, Rebel served in the level Rebel Alliance and was in the Adelphi Rangers of the New Republic. Uh, flies a. T sixty five BX wing, uh, met a oh, is also a New Republic pilot, Trapper Wolf. Uh, met up with the um, Razor Crest, uh, and then saved in Jaren. Oh, Wolf was one that. Uh, oh no, w wait, Wolf, uh, Mandalorian eventually transmitted reluctantly. Oh, yeah, then Wolf realized, wait a second, you were the one that probably, like, uh, was at the, uh, that thing, the breakout one. Uh, then they try to catch, uh, Mando, but they don't, uh, but they learn that he was, you know, doing good stuff. Uh, later they find the, uh, Razor Crest, uh, when that whole frog thing happened. And, uh... They say, okay, you're not that bad. Then they go to Navarro. Uh, they meet uh, Grief Karga. About, oh, this all happens in that one. Uh, and, yeah, let's see. I guess there's more than one, a couple other times they cross paths. Uh, pursuing the Razor Crest, moving on, ice, the ice frog thing. Oh, yeah, you offered Cara Dune a jo job. I forgot about that part. Uh, uh, encounter above Tatooine. Oh, that was late. Let's see. Sometimes later, they found, they were patrolling above Tatooine. And they found uh, the uh, N1. And then Tava uh, connected. Uh, said, wait a second. Do you have something to do with it? Oh, Pirate Matter. Here we go. Yes, but we know what happened in this episode. Uh, personality and traits: uh, human, five foot nine. Um, equipment: we don't need anything else. Uh, great character, uh, Paul Sun Huang Li. And you know, you'll you'll know who Captain Tave is if you're a fan of uh, Kim's Convenience Store. Uh, and if you're not, you should definitely check that show out. I'm sure it's on streaming. Uh, okay. So we got Tava. What else we got? Oh, should we look up Gorian Shard? Uh, okay. Gorian Shard was a pirate king, gang of pirates, uh, including Vane. Gorian Shard, green hair. They say it's hair. I'd say, uh. There's a lot of articles about Gorian Shard. 
But yeah, Goran Shard, Cumulus class Corsair ship. Uh, maybe we could read about that next. Uh, and yeah, tried to deal with it, and uh, that was it. Very it was the king of the pirates, though. Male pirate king, commanded several pirates, including Vane. And uh, his name was familiar. People in Navarro sector. And uh, then, like, uh, in a puffer's pink eye, pig's eye, uh, that was it. Okay, Cumulus class Corsair. Oh, and now I just remember what the happened to the Razor Crest. I didn't even have to look it up. Uh, the Razor Crest, uh, that was like what, uh, when, when he was on that planet with like uh, Boba Fett's, and, um, who was that, uh, uh, so that, uh, but the other bounty hunter, um, I don't know, but that was when I remember the, the, he was like, oh, get on my ship. And then who's the, who's the person who, but behind all of it, I can't think of it now. Anyway, a cumulus class Corsair is a type of Corsair ship used by, uh, Gorian Shard. What's a Corsair ship type? It's a type of ship, a Leonin regime used them. And during the New Republic, Shard had one. And that's it. It's uh, appeared in a couple bo- audiobooks and uh, two episodes of The Mandalorian. And looks like that's it. What was I trying to look up, though? Well, we know what happened to... Uh, where Where did uh, Mando get the M1? Do we know the answer to that? No, I don't know. Did M1... Man, um, spellings off. M A N. There we go. Okay, Jinjarin's N one. It's not M one. That's what it is. Oh, this is from Esquire. Uh, everything you need to know about the, this is by Bra- Brady Langman, uh, January twenty sixth, twenty twenty two. Uh, okay. I guess it happened in another episode of a show. Um. Naboo N1 Starfighter. Uh, Sedaris talks about it. Uh, when is this? Uh, all nostalgia side. Maybe it happened in an episode of Boba Fett because I didn't see the whole thing. Uh, actually, I only saw one episode. Uh, Queen Amidala uh, had an N1 star starship. Uh, young Anakin hopped in it and uh, dealt with a trade ship. Uh, Pelimato says uh, it's so ancient. It'll be undetectable to other flying v- vehicles. Plus, it has hyperdrive and it's very, very fast. Uh, so, yeah, people are happy. Uh, I guess uh, a square. So that's cool. Uh, okay, so that is uh, that. What else we got here? Anything else? No, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll we'll be back uh, with another episode of Mandalorian soon, but. Uh, Thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, good night. All right, I want to thank everybody who came a patron recently. I want to thank Elaine, Catherine, and M. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, and good night, Patrick, Martin, and Abby. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, and good night, Catherine, Trenton, and Laura. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, and good night, SMC, Amanda, and Rory. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, and good night, Judith, Jim, and Vanna. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Brent, Amanda, and Brett. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Richie, Chloe, and Hannah. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Corinne, Richard, and Katie. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Maxwell, Nick, and Hannah. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Neil, Ryan, and Adina, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Brittany, Joseph, and Robin, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Elizabeth, Brian, and Eric, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Joshua, Vanessa, and Ryan, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Simbri, Manuel, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Grace and Aaron, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sleeping Me exists as a podcast at all because of people that support the show directly. Couldn't do it without all of you. 
uh, people that support the show on Patreon, Apple Podcasts, or support our sponsors. And we grow as a podcast uh, by people simply spreading the word and letting other people know about the show. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks. Uh, really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without all of you. And uh, here's a talk you and Spencer. That's how we've been able to grow the pot, like uh, grow uh, the sh- uh, archives and stuff like that. Thanks and good night, everybody. Uh, hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a talk you in message. If we don't have a talk you in sponsor, or if you're not in the U.S. and you're hearing this, uh, uh, it, it should be huge for you to become a sponsor, particularly uh, non-U.S. listeners. We don't have any non-U.S. sponsors other than in Canada. We got Poly Sleep, which you should check out. If you're in Canada, but if you value the show, uh, whether you're in the U.S. or wherever you are in the world, and you can afford to support the podcast, we could really use your support right now. Uh, like we rely on listener support uh, to keep the show going. You get great bonus content in return, but you get to feel great uh, knowing the podcast that puts you to sleep is valuable to you and knowing you're supporting it back. So uh, thank you so much. I couldn't do without all of you. But yeah, if you're not in the U.S. and you're hearing this message, please, if you're awake right now, uh, maybe it'll give you a little peace of mind. If you can afford to support the show, 5, 10, 20 bucks a month, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron is the best way to do that. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. And I've heard from listeners lately, your best bet is to pay uh, in uh, U.S. dollars, uh, even though Patreon allows you to pay in your local currency, because you're going to get a better conversion rate from your local bank or credit card. Uh, But yeah, sign up and support the show. Thanks so much.